Whitley Strieber uh, was just a normal guy that uh, was abducted many a times by aliens and is still it's still abducted I think and he wrote a book called Communion if you haven't already heard of it which I'm sure you have um, it's worth a read now in this book he for example explains how they walked him out through the front room wall through glass and everything um, and he knows he you know in the next morning he knew what had happened because when he went downstairs he could see in the front room uh, mud and um, flowers from where he walked back through the wall when they returned him back but he also had an implant inside his i think it was his neck and at around that time there was a guy called dr roger lear pro professional doctor who was finding out that um inside patients there were these weird um devices that he didn't understand and i'll go into uh alien implants in the next video but he is so Dr. Roger Lear then became fascinated while he was just doing normal surgeries for people and they would come across people with these um, implants and sometimes he would notice them in the nose and things like that. Um, and he eventually found out that they actually let off some sort of uh, RF frequency, if I remember correctly, or UHF frequency, um, which made him more and more interested. So he then devoted more and more time to actually only doing surgery on people with implants to actually take the implants out and one of the people was Whitley Strieber who I mentioned in the last video now when he went to take the implant out and there was a camera crew there if I remember correctly uh, the actual implant moved uh, just as he put the scalpel near near the guy's I think it was neck near Whitley's neck it moved away so this implant knew that it was going to be taken out um, I'll cover more about the implants on the next video the most common place an alien implant was put originally was inside your nose, up your nose cavity. But a lot of people would have nosebleeds and the actual implant would come out and sometimes people would see it in the tissue and say, what's that black thing in there? And they, they just thought it was a bit of metal from, I don't know, somewhere else. Um, but what aliens then ended up doing, they moved them to different places. Um, but one of the things they've, they've done is they've uh, they scoop out uh, a bit of your flesh and then they wrap the implant inside this flesh and then they put the flesh back inside you with the implant inside that and that stops the uh, implant being rejected as a foreign object by your body so um, abductees have these sort of scoop marks and that's another way you can prove that they was definitely abducted but now they put the uh, right behind your eye the implant they push it up right into your brain so we can't so some alien implants actually grow um, fibers that attach to your inside of whatever, wherever it is inside your body. Um, now it's believed that they actually deliberately do that. It's not just like a, you know your skin wrapping around it or your your fibers wrapping around it. This looks like it's actually designed to have fibers come out and attach themselves to your to you. So the the question then is, what is the purpose of these things if they have some sort of frequency? Now, one contactee had turned around to, um, or was was told by an alien that uh, the alien said that they could find a fly anywhere on on the planet Earth. Now, they didn't say whether they could find a fly using a implant. So the question is, is that to help track the people, as well as vital statistics? I would probably say yes, it is. It's probably there to monitor people welcome welcome to me something to think about TV so I run uh, a TikTok page and profile called something to think about TV where I talk about lots of topics often heavily heavily controversial topics so currently I'm collaborating with our true history who's a good friend of mine and we have discussions every week uh, on a Monday on his profile our true history we go live at 12 p.m. midday and on my profile something to think about TV Fridays 12 p.m. lots of debates lots of topics often very controversial so add me follow me subscribe and let's support each other catch you later give me your views on the first moon landing was it real or was it fake my opinion is it's fake. Uh, various reasons that give that away is one is the uh, at the bottom of the lander there was no dust that would have been 
brought up. There was no crater mark or anything whatsoever. That's I know there's so many other things, you know, about the fake rocks and everything else. And I do believe NASA has faked a lot of the moon landings, but I do believe they have actually been there at least once or twice. Um, the other reason why I struggle to believe it was real is um, they filmed NASA. Fil the, the broadcast that people got around the world is this. I don't know if you can even make it out. And that is because NASA used uh, a camera pointing at a projector screen with the footage being shown on a projector screen. So in other words, the broadcast that you got on your TV was being filmed on a projector screen. Um, and there's no reason for them to have done that. They could have uh, broadcast um, the, you know, the direct feed instead of having to film a... So that makes me think they were trying to avoid the stars because people would have started to work out there's no stars in the constellations, etc. So I think that was fake. Um, now, just to let you know what I've got you, um, you've asked, some of you have asked for can anything go on Spotify or at least a podcast. We've, or I've now put the uh, live chats that we've done on Spotify so as a podcast. So if you search Our True History, uh, on Spotify, you'll you'll find our or my live chats that I do with um, something to think about TV. So if you want podcasts, there you go. And don't forget um, all the videos that I do plus um, the live chats are on YouTube. And I've now done a playlist um, called Outro History Playlist because someone's asked, can they just have all of the videos so they don't have to, you know watch them on tiktok and keep flicking so um <laughs> there it is for you but just going back to nasa now i will go back to um nasa actually landing on the moon because there's there's a story out there that one of the missions there was an extra astronaut that wasn't told to the public about and that astronaut got off the um craft when it landed on the moon to go and look at an alien ship uh, that looked like the Umuyumu. I know I can't pronounce it, but that long rock that that passed us. I did mention it in another video. Um, apparently, there's one of those on on the moon, and it's been there for however millions of years, uh, derelict. People's already or aliens are already scavenged it. But I'll talk about that in another video. Thanks. Demons versus aliens. Now, some people have been saying when I mention aliens, there's no such thing as aliens. Demons. I've asked them what their definition of demon is, and they say it's a fallen angel. So, okay, my definition of a fallen angel is an Anunnaki that has a relationship with humans who shouldn't have, and that's why the fallen are not, you know, they're, they're disowned. It's evil or bad. I hope that makes sense. Grey aliens take our souls. Uh, they do. Uh, there's been many reports from hypnotists that have uh, hypnotized an abductee and they have seen, the abductees have seen a person, for example, lying on, an, on in a ship on a um, sort of bed type thing um, and a tube above this, this person and this person is dying and the light 
from the soul from the top of his head which makes sense because that's where i believe the soul or the light being comes from goes up into this tube as this person's dying and the abductee watched it watch this light go all the way around into a container a large container that had a clone of the person that was just dying um so they call us containers that's why they don't look at us as um important uh many more cases of um aliens having you know thousands and thousands of these lights which is our spirits this is a dead alien woman on a spaceship on mars so the story goes nasa one of nasa's apollo missions had an extra person or an extra couple of people that went up with the normal crew uh when they arrived on the moon these other people went to this ship that looked like the uh, umi umi ship which past us recently uh, but the one on the moon is just obviously stationary it's been derelict uh, other aliens had apparently got in and, and ransacked it um, all that was left is uh, pretty much this woman that was you know perfectly preserved type of thing but she was half android they said anyway they took her back to the ship uh, and brought her back home apparently uh, so have a look at that but also on that same mission i think it was um the one of the astronauts took a picture of an alien that came up to him and the alien said you shouldn't be here and there's a picture online but i can't find it this isn't the real one but if you find it let me know ufos are invisible they're invisible to the naked eye a lot of them anyway um so when you see footage that's grainy and blurry or even green like this um it's because they're used with uh, night vision cameras or infrared cameras there's just a video here showing that people couldn't see the actual triangular object with their naked eye um but they did with the night vision now you need a certain type of night vision goggles um you can't just get the oldest type you have to have um the very latest versions because they, they certain optics only work to be able to see these these craft um, but I have to just say this video is sponsored by FridgeDoorAlarm.com FridgeDoorAlarm.com And they offer um, a product that you stick to your fridge and you have different time delays. You can get it from FridgeDoorAlarm.com or you can get it from eBay. This is only for the UK. So there's the one there. If you look for the, the pictures there, be careful because there's other ones out there that are literally just a door alarm. They just go off as soon as you open the door and they're trying to pretend they're fridge freezer things. But these ones are actually real ones and you can set how long you want the actual delay for. Uh, and then it only goes quiet and then gets louder and louder. Whereas other ones just once so yeah just go for the ones that these pictures here uh so going back to the uh optics now military grade ones uh are the best obviously but they come at a hefty price um 16,000 i think i looked at one so if you get in um do some research if you are interested in looking into the sky now a lot of videos i've seen on youtube um have been pulled off uh i've seen literally almost what looks like space battles uh that people's filmed using their uh, binoculars or their um, telescopes um but you can't uh you know you can't find those now hardly on youtube and you'll probably know some of the people that were putting these videos online they and there's one guy that, that literally films the moon all day long and all night um he's been pulled off now because obviously there were so many objects that he would capture um so so a lot of the videos are getting pulled off so if you want to you know see a ufo unfortunately you will really need to have night vision goggles that can see at night now aliens use the moon as a base uh, different types of aliens are on there including uh, earth people and sometimes people will say oh look there's a ufo on a video and then they try and recreate it with a cgi and they do recreate it and they say well that's how the original was done just because you can recreate something doesn't mean that's how the original was done i don't know if you can see the uh, spacecraft there now um they use craters uh, and they enter through the craters so that's why sometimes you see lights in craters there are structures on the moon but they're generally older ones and obviously they the uh, aliens use the back far side of the moon as well i don't know whether that's to do with the heat from the sun or why or whether they're just trying to avoid showing us um but i must say this video is sponsored by this book here black ops uh, alien spirits bigfoot and our untold history i have a copy of it myself it is a fantastic book uh, you can get it on amazon um, highly recommend it.
Forgive me if you already know the story of Travis Walton, but uh, for those that don't, there's a movie out called Fire in the Sky. Um, really good movie, actually. Travis admits that some of it uh, the filmmakers took a few liberties on. But the story of Travis Walton, I think it was in the uh, late 70s or very early 80s, um, was driving back uh, from work, and him and six other colleagues were loggers in the States, which cut, they cut down trees, and they was coming back one night, and they saw this bright orangey red glow, and they thought it was a, the forest was on fire, so they went to investigate. Turns out it wasn't the fire, it was a UFO hovering uh, near the tree line. Travis got out and decided to walk near the UFO. The UFO uh, sent a light beam out and knocked him, I think about 10 foot, into the air and then onto the ground. Um, Travis obviously was un either unconscious or dead at that point, according to his colleagues, who decided to split. So they drove really fast away from the area. Uh, as they were driving, they all realised that that's not the right thing to do, to leave the guy there. So they went back, and when they got back, Travis and the spaceship had gone. They had no choice but to drive home. They told the sheriff, and next thing you know is the sheriff thought that they had killed Travis and buried him. Um, they took, they forced the six to have lie detector tests, and every single one passed, which was pretty much unheard of. You don't normally get six people telling exactly the same story unless it's true. The sheriff and other people went out to the area over the next few days, uh, and they came across um, radiation. You know, they took, took various different bits of equipment, etc. I uh, could see radiation marks on trees, I think, if I remember correctly, uh, but still no sign of Travis. I think about six or seven days passed, and then finally, uh, Travis gave f f phoned uh, his sister to come and pack, pick him up. He was on the outskirts of town. Uh, he wasn't no naked, but the film says he was. Um, so he was picked up, and subsequently told his story that um, obviously he was uh, on a spaceship. Now. The original story was obviously he thought that the aliens were trying to experiment on him while they were had him in the ship. But, and I, I've listened to virtually everything Travis has ever said, and early on I thought, no, it sounded to me like they hit him with a beam and then realised that they shouldn't really have done that and then picked him up and repaired him and helped, healed him. Uh, and it took about six days to heal him and then he, he was dropped back off. Now, he was awake uh, once or twice during the six days and could actually see the aliens. Uh, anyway, recently, Travis has actually said the same thing. He says that I think these were actually trying to help me. They weren't trying to operate on me or trying to kill me. Um, so I'm not sure which aliens they were, whether or not they were great uh, Zetas or Orions. What has an owl got to do with aliens? Well, actually, um, the little greys implant abductees with um, images of owls uh, they do other creatures as well but generally owls um, so it's a false memory so when you wake up in the morning you think oh I saw an owl outside my window no it's probably a little grey um, now it's possible to actually implant uh, false memories here look there's so we're doing it now we can actually do this so it's not inconceivable that um, the little greys and other aliens do it. Now just while I've got you, don't forget to sign up to uh, my YouTube channel. And the only reason why I say that is just in case TikTok takes me down, um, you c you've still got me there if you're interested. And also I show um, live chats there, uh, which you don't get on TikTok. So please subscribe to the YouTube channel, How True History, just search How True History Parts um, and subscribe. Do you remember this guy from 2003? He's the guy that invented the Beagle 2, which was a probe that was due to land on the moon. He successfully did it um, to the point that it got to the moon. Um, however, because he was British and an independent um, space entrepreneur, he wasn't part of NASA or the you know anything else that was to do with the establishment. It, the I knew what was going to happen. The probe didn't work. Now everyone's going to say, oh, well, that's you know just a malfunction. But there's a history of uh, aliens stopping um, probes, etc. So we've got SpaceX rocket here in 2016 that exploded. But more importantly was this Russian one. And I, I'd heard about this a long time ago, and it's a, a very true story. Russian probe went to Mars's moon. Well, it didn't make it, and I'll tell you that in the next video. Aliens 
AI UFOs do interfere with spaceships and probes. Uh, many cases you can have a look on sites. So, for example, Voyagers 2 had an issue, um, but people couldn't f work out what it was, very strange, but then they ended up using the usual one where it's, oh, it was uh, someone forgot to do something or whatever. But that's not the most important one. This one here is um, an image from the Russian... A probe that was going to Phobos, which is a moon of Mars, uh, back in 1988. Now that object, uh, over three or four pictures, got closer and closer. It was massive, absolutely massive. And then the probe just died. So in other words, that object was coming to wipe out the probe to, from landing on uh, there, because obviously there's aliens already there. And now if you're new to my channel, go back and watch video one onwards. They're all different, so that's why you need to watch. Um, I know I covered the Moon Girl uh, in a previous video, but I thought this, you'd find this funny. I've had six people on that on the comments saying different things. So one says that it's fake because it was done by a French artist, and I'm an idiot. Another one said uh, it was done by a film studio, go get a life. Another one said it was done by a cult, so in other words it was fake and made up by a cult, and I should do better research. I've had six different versions of that. but um, So what I'm saying is when you read posts and someone says it's proven to be just take it with a pinch of salt so uh, apparently it was actually uh, Apollo 20 I couldn't remember the um, and they call her the Mona Lisa um, there's apparently a video out there somewhere showing a bit more about this so if you are interested in this video uh, or this particular creature and story uh, you should be able to find some more information uh, so it's just a quick video sorry skinny bob video this is supposedly from a kgb uh source and it shows ufo and aliens now i'm calling fake on it uh, you don't have to agree with me but i know filming i know camera work i know uh, eight millimeter film very well uh, i won't go into why now when you film a subject uh, as a proper cameraman and this would have been a professional cameraman doing this you do not move the camera you hold it you lock it still you stand there you don't walk around uh which is you know, one factor that shows it was amateur, amateurish. Um, second of all, these cameras need a lot of light. Um, and these aliens, whether they're Rositas or Orion, are actually happy in light. They like light. So, as you see, it's very greyed out. This should be totally, totally bright if I was uh, filming an alien. And also, this costume is supposed to be skin tight. And they're supposed to be three foot, three foot five, not six foot. Who, who is in the inside of the moon? Well, the Nazis are, and you're probably saying, oh, he's a nutter. Uh, but look, it's not just me, look, the Telegraph. Why are we still obsessed with the idea of Nazis on the moon? Probably because they were there before the Americans were, and they were. Um, now, the Americans are there, the little greys, the android-type uh, worker bees, and the tall whites are there. I believe um, possibly the Nordics are there. Um, some reptilians are there. I'm not sure if it's the Dracos or a different race. Um, but you're probably wondering what they're doing on the moon. Well, they're mining it, for sure, inside. They're also doing their researches in there. Um, and that's their sort of a base between Earth. Even though Earth has got more bases for aliens, underwater, etc. But we'll go into that in another video. But you're probably wondering why the aliens with their technology and everything actually need us well let me just give you an example there's a place somewhere a secret place in the states which is a rendezvous point now certain species of aliens come down and trade with the american when i say the americans the secret military complex and they trade for clothes human clothes and human food so you've got to ask yourself why does a certain type of alien want to take human clothes and human food um, you know is it for slaves or whatever but what happens is the Americans then get given technology um, and they mess around with this technology now guess what they do they actually uh, enhance that technology the Americans actually enhance the technology I'm sure this goes on with the Nazis as well but I'm just using the Americans as I've heard about this so they enhance the technology. Now, when the aliens come back, or a different race of aliens come back down, the Americans then trade that new, improved version of whatever the technology was. Obviously, this is over a period of time. It's not done overnight. Um, they trade that technology back for 
more technology from the aliens. So apparently uh, we are very good at um, creating things and, and ingenuity, whereas it appears a lot of the alien races have become stagnant. You know, they, they're, they've they obviously got this massive IQ, but the, the initial spark of thought... Now, I'd heard this actually, you know, almost when I was a bloody kid. Um, people saying that, oh, the aliens want us because we're clever. And I used to think, well, that, that ain't right. I can't, surely that can't be right. But we're clever in a, in a way that they're not anymore. Um, so, but it goes back to the question is, why do they need human clothes and human food? And I'll talk about that in another video. So the American personnel, I'm talking about Americans because I know more about them than the Nazis, um, are kind of treated like slaves and uh, the Council of Aliens don't like that. So the way the Americans get around this is they um, clone their body, the, the service person's body, to be 20 years younger. So when they finish the, the, their tour uh, of the moon or wherever they're working, they get uh, their soul or spirit or whatever you want to call it goes from the 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 older body into the younger body and then they they time traveled back 20 years make of that as you will but that's uh, and apparently they don't then get the benefits of the pay so the only thing they've got is the knowledge uh, so there's some whistleblowers out there that say that but i must just quickly say that we've now i've now added a drive time chat um to youtube uh, they're about 20 odd minutes and they cover one whole subject per time so this one's about ghosts so do subscribe to where are all the humans that go missing well there's a theory that um, they're being used as slaves on other planets by aliens now this site here called space.com talks about it um, the independent newspaper also talks about you know is it possible where where are they going um, now look at the statistics how many people per year go missing? That's a hell of a lot. And that's just in the States. Um, look how many children go missing. 800,000 a year. That's that's just incredible. Um, now, there is one person that's actually looking into this, and it's uh, a guy called David Polides. And he was a former police officer. I'm going to cover him on the next video because he he's narrowed down certain things to to why people go missing um, so I'll cover that in the next video hundreds of thousands of people go missing each year in every country uh, so David Polides ex-police officer um, done uh, has, has looked into this significantly uh, using his detective skills and he's done uh, many books and series called missing 411 the one I'm looking at now is the hunted now this particular one he covers um, hunters that go out in the woods to hunt deer or whatever and then they disappear now normally it's just the last person or the first person in a group the, when i say last person someone walking and no one else has got eyes on them so it's always the person that's not got eyes is the one that goes missing which makes it really strange and i will cover more of missing 411 when i get to portals but David's noticed that some uh, German scientists have gone missing. Now, I think that's slightly different from these other missing ones. I think they're probably abducted by Nazis or aliens to use. To help my case in to prove that there is a space fleet, this guy here, Gary McKinnon, in 2002 was arrested by, well, the British police, but on behalf of the American because he hacked into the secret military complex's computers. And he saw the names of the space fleet Yes, back in 2004 there was a space fleet, uh, even prior to that. He saw the personnel's names and all sorts of different things. And he was then hunted by America, uh, or the American police, uh, military. And he was going to be extradited, but luck would have it. Long story short, it went on for a long time. He finally got away with... Um, actually nothing really um, but he had the information now, if you want to watch his interview it's on richplanet.tv uh, sorry richplanet.net and his video number 214 Leonardo da Vinci kept a diary but for two years after he entered a cave the diary was empty now speculation leads people to believe that he um, was a contactee with aliens and they showed him a lot of things possibly even stuff from the future now that sounds quite um incredible really but 
Uh, when you look at what the guy's done, and I don't know if you really look into what he's done, not only does he uh, draw things that have got hidden messages apparently inside him, so he's not, he was trying back then to give the messages, but he also does anatomy. He also, wait for it, created helicopters and aeroplanes and uh all right he didn't actually make them but he did design them based on things that he may have seen now the question is did he actually was he um shown any of this and was he given help by aliens while i'm talking about uh, famous people that have seen ufos possibly such as da vinci william shakespeare possibly saw a ufo he wrote about some sort of light in the sky but um, he also may know about souls, so he may have been abducted and learnt about spirits. The only reason why I say that is because when you read his um, passage that says, All the world is a stage, we are but players coming and going. I'm paraphrasing, uh, don't shoot me for that. But, um, you know, if you look at it from the soul point of view, the whole world is a stage, which it pretty much is for, for the spirits, and we're just players coming and going. Um, so, did he see uh, an alien? Well, some people actually even say that he is an alien, um, but uh, that's down to interpretation. But uh, he, I think he probably did. Modern life on Mars, and no, I'm not talking about the microscopic type. I'm talking about sentient uh, beings that live in Mars. So what you're looking at here is a tunnel. Now you can see lots of different pictures from different uh, space satellites that's passed Mars. Now these tubes were actually built for the people that was living on Mars to go underground. So you may remember I mentioned about the atomic bomb that was set off on Mars. They, uh, not everyone obviously died, they went underground and they made massive, massive tunnels um, underground. Now, over time, these tunnels have become exposed, um, so we can now see them, but before they were actually underneath the ground. And so the indigenous people that were there now live underground, along with, wait for it, yes, humans and Nazis. Now, they don't mix with um, the indigenous people. Please subscribe to my backup channel, it's called Outro History Replies, as in I would reply to you. Just in case anything happens to this TikTok account, you can just search for the other one now and just subscribe and then you'll always be up to date with me. Um, also, don't forget I'm on YouTube. So, I was just looking here and I found this website, it's called, and it basically says scientists say natural underground tunnels will be ideal for people to come like yes that's because if you watch the other video you know there's already underground tunnels made by the martians we yes might as well call them martians um now corey good um is just one whistleblower and uh, now make of him as you will but he does actually say the same thing as me which is the germans were there uh way back in the 30s because of the help as i mentioned now he also said that um when he was there in a military capacity they were having wars with other alien races not the martians but other alien races on the moon which begs me to think that we create you followed me and got how many followers yeah probably none but you will actually get uh, knowledge so when the apollo missions were happening um they would uh, people down on Earth would use what they call ham radios back then to actually listen in to conversations that the astronauts had back with uh, the base at NASA. And one of the code words was Santa Claus, and that uh, code word means aliens. So they actually said, and uh, this was recorded on ham radio, that the uh, f Santa Claus is real. So basically, in other words, they could see UFOs flying around during... Uh, one of the missions um, but other uh, notable people that have astronauts that have sort of said that they've seen UFOs is Buzz Aldrin he uh, was on the mission with Neil Armstrong and has been outspoken about this unfortunately he's part Mars has domes now this is just one picture here which shows something that's if you believe this was taken from the the ground of mars but a lot of people go through the orbital photographs of nasa's and they can find these strange anomalies uh such as these domes here now supposedly they're made out of glass according to whistleblowers but it's not just domes look at these these although this is a rendering it's not the real picture it shows what is on mars and there's three mile high pyramid type structures 
um, again supposedly made out of glass and you're gonna say glass is a bad <laughs> idea um, now bear in mind this was probably when uh, this was covered over with glass and everything else now NASA is actually working with glass at the moment um, now I've looked into glass um, and it turns out that if you make glass in a zero gravity environment where there's no moisture glass certain types of glass how you make it is stronger than steel I thought I'd show you some pictures uh, supposedly from Mars so someone with a keen eye noticed something down there and when it's blown up it kind of looks like some sort of humanoid figure riding something maybe um, moving along on the, the atmosphere Now the atmosphere on Mars supposedly from whistleblowers is not what we're told by NASA um, it's not breathable you still need a suit but it's not uh, anywhere as bad so we'll just have a look at some other pictures here this is well, you can probably guess what that looks like uh, on Mars and this is a strange thing it looks like like lichen I think it's pronounced which is a um, creature type thing apparently I think um, that grows here on earth so it's kind of weird how it looks like it's there um, and there's other objects here that looks like that so I just thought I'd show you some quite fun Star Trek and real aliens now this guy Gene Roddenberry was an American fighter pilot in World War II and a very good one and he claimed to say that he saw a craft once and inside that hovering craft uh, through the windows he could see little beings with big heads now he doesn't say whether or not he was abducted by them but hold that thought for a moment so little creatures with big heads hmm okay so then he wrote uh, an episode the very first episode of Star Trek where he had this character now this character in the film um, captures humans um, experiments on them and watches them from afar which is very similar to what would happen if a grey was to capture you experiment on you so did Roddenberry see an alien the council of aliens I've mentioned before is made up of very different uh, aliens that allow you as a soul or as a light spirit to join you know before you're born they're totally different from the council of nine and the council of nine has Atum uh, as one of the main deities now these deities through mediums and clairvoyance have said that they've been with us since uh, the start of time now that time probably means the time from when humans were created not from previous now I'm talking here about uh, earth um, being seeded now these guys wouldn't have done that it was a race that we call the ancients now uh, the reason why I believe that we was seeded is because there's these three three billion year old um, objects that have been found uh, around different places now I think that they probably had um, DNA or bacteria or something to help start life on earth now there's people say um or eyewitnesses and whistle whistleblowers should i say have said that other aliens have the same dna as us in fact even bigfoot does so then you start thinking well okay did they all make us no the ancients had this particular type of dna now we're calling it human dna but obviously it's not human dna let's just call it um ancient dna so the ancients went round um, seeding planets and <clears throat> the reason why we can say that is because when we look at um, look at this just this is a little fruit fly and it has human DNA now if you imagine then that the, the whistleblowers that say all the other aliens have the same DNA as us then it makes sense that one particular race that probably started life before anyone else went round seeding the planets and if that's the case then you've got uh, a race of beings that's older than uh, li any life that existed on any other planet now the source or creation uh, which is what the aliens call God uh, now whether or not it's sentient I don't know whether or not it just manifests things um, 
I'm on the side of manifesting things, but apparently the source or creation had told the ancients, which were the first race ever on the universe, um, to go and seed. So they were guided by the source or creation to create life throughout the universe. So when someone says, oh, Bigfoot's DNA matches, it's got humans' DNA in it, therefore it's not real, think again because even a little fly has. I've just added some videos to the backup channel, Our True History Replies, and I'm going to start putting the drive time chats that I have with something to think about. We chat in the car about various subjects, and we, what we decided to do was make them each one about one particular subject. So the first one that I've uploaded is missing people, um, and it's not just missing people you know that, that get killed, it's missing people that vanish uh, in a mysterious way. So we chat about that. Um, because it's quite long, it's about 20 minutes, I've done them in different parts, three minutes each, so you can just scroll past and watch the next one and the next one and the next one. Um, I hope you like it. So please subscribe to um, the new channel, which is... It's also a sort of a backup channel. It's worth subscribing to just in case. Our True History Replies, it's called, and you'll see these videos on there, and I'll be adding more as we go. Thank you. Some abductees have said they've actually seen uh, human, uh, sort of American personnel, or military personnel, uh, helping with the, or working with the Greys and the Tall Whites. Um, now, if it was for the benefit of the greys then there's no real point in the military being there so that brings me to my next point um now there's been radiation marks um actual physical radiation marks from abductees um now i come up with the idea that maybe um and they're scoop marks sometimes as well maybe these abduct maybe these um these are tests to help uh, military people withstand the radiation of space in other words instead of using their own people they're just picking people up off the off of earth testing on them and then pull them back up another time so it might be a military exercise as opposed to a grey exercise I mentioned in the last video the word false flag event I'm not going to go into it on my channel um, something to think about TV uh, talks about false flags he also talks about crisis actors etc um, so if you're interested to know more about the false flag uh, please visit his channel there's some good references out there for what actually um, constitutes what a craft looks like an alien craft and this is the Abdamsky type now he is a guy that uh, allegedly took photographs of them um, I, I'm not sure whether it, because he had these things underneath and if you look there's nothing else that has anything sort of protruding like that underneath um i'm not saying that he didn't actually see them i'm just saying he may have recreated them because he was getting ridiculed so he had to take take photographs and recreate them and maybe got it slightly different it just looks a weird one compared to everything else's so we can take from all the aliens that have been visiting earth the fact that none of them at the moment are going to wipe us out they probably would have done it before we had the ability to have technological advanced weapons or even back engineered their, their craft so no aliens are going to come here and invade us however there's a thing called project blue beam which is a military thing i'd heard about it um 20 years ago i think um and it was set up before that and basically what that says is that the military will create a false flag a secret military will create a false flag alien invasion using holograms so that people will then say oh please hide me in these big bunkers or please hide me somewhere do whatever it takes have our freedom just watch this if you don't believe me on um, the technology <laughs> I'll talk about Albert Einstein a bit more down the line, um, but just hold this in your thoughts. So he was about 25, 26 when he became famous, um, and even more so later in life. But during that period, while he was around that age, uh, he worked at a patent office. Now, a patent office is a place where... So, for example, if I come up with an anti-gravity concept... I would submit it for, to the patent office and they would approve it and that means no one else can now copy that, that's mine and I can now create that product. Um, 
obviously they can reject it and say no someone else has already come up with that or it's too similar to, to another one so what I'm saying is maybe Einstein wasn't as smart as we all think he was he would be getting lots of different people um, ideas you know and, and patents so it wouldn't have just been my anti-gravity someone else could have sent him that so he's used I think he may have used other people's ideas so here is George Adamski. He's the one that took the picture of this UFO. Uh, as I mentioned in the last video, I kind of think it looks a bit odd. Um, doesn't suit the other ones. Now, it's possible that he was ridiculed and had to make up pictures in order to prove that he actually saw this craft. Now, that's, uh, if that's the case, that's very similar to this alien autopsy film. Now, Ray Santilli found, uh, came across a... A cameraman that apparently was at Area 51 and took the footage of this um, autopsy. Now, when he paid for it, he had to borrow money, paid for it. Uh, when he got the footage back to the UK, it disintegrated, and film does that if, if it's been stored and then opened. Um, so he apparently recreated this, but he also injected the few frames. There's a few times that you can actually see the frames difference. Um, where he still had good frames so he put them in there now i'll cover this one a bit more in the next video story go so the story goes race until he got the footage um <clears throat> it was destroyed by the time he got it back to the uk he borrowed money and had to pay the guy back so the only thing he could do was recreate this in uh, a front room um now this is apparently a recreation that he done now originally he claimed it was real then he claimed it was uh fake but on the proviso that some of the frames that were still in, uh, that were still seeable, that wasn't disintegrated, he put into the actual film itself. Now, I've watched this over, and because I know about film, I knew when that one or two frames popped up, and yes, it, he did a very good job, and it does look very similar to the original one that, in those one or two frames. Um, now, this is quite amazing, because um, CGI, or well, not CGI, but uh, Stan Winston from the film effects company looked at this and actually said this was amazing um, work so well done to Ray but I do believe he saw it. The secret military uh, craft called the TR-3B which is an American uh, triangle anti-gravity craft. Now this was actually featured in uh, the last series of the X-Files. If you actually watch the last series of the X-Files you will see so many things that they've um, got right. They really have um they really did uh, do a great job on on knowing uh, a lot of stuff so when you watch that last series a lot of that is actually genuine but that uh, obviously the makers are trying to get it out there for us to understand and i think that was one of the shots there from it um but can i just tell you a little story um way back when youtube first started i think about a year or two after it started i was researching as i do and i came across this video and it was about 20 minutes long and it had a guy standing by a projector screen and a table in front of him with notes on etc and the camera was behind various people now these were all army people all wearing their army costumes so there's probably about 20 or 30 in the room that i could tell from the camera angle pointing over their heads to the guy with the projector screen who was doing the talking and he covered um, the TR-3B, he explained how they landed with the tripod legs, um, why the people couldn't get near them, there was a certain type of landing pad that they had to have. Um, now, back then I, I didn't know anything about YouTube really, I didn't know that you should, could even copy the films off of YouTube to save, um, and I assumed it would still be there, but obviously it's been pulled. But there was a couple of other interesting things that he'd done. Now, I... I have to believe this was genuine because to get all these people and loads and loads of slideshows of craft uh, that he was going through would just for what a YouTube video and back then YouTube wasn't even that popular um, so but one of the couple of things that he did show he showed um, a craft near Saturn with uh, from, so basically from a window from uh, whatever craft they were in I think it might have said the TR3B or a different craft but he someone had taken a photograph out of the window of this craft near Saturn and it showed another craft with um, a USAF, I think it was, flag or an American flag, I'm not quite sure which one it was. So that was really interesting because it clearly means that they 
they'd been there for some time. And another photograph, along with many others that he showed, um, showed some sort of dinosaur head popping out of some trees. Now, he said that the craft that they were in had the ability to go back in time. Um, make of that as you will. I personally believed it. Uh, I, I wish I could get my hands on that footage again. It was 20 minutes long, so for a laugh, it wasn't worth doing. This, this to me, I believe was genuine. Aliens under our oceans. They don't just have bases on Moon, Mars and other planets. They actually also have bases on Earth in mountains, which is another story, and also under the, our oceans. Um, and they go deep underneath. Now, they're, they're craft, obviously, because they've got um, anti-gravity and it's got it creates a shield around it, which is a, a distortion field. It obviously doesn't get affected by the pressure of the ocean. But it's not just oceans. Lake Titicaca also has uh, a base underneath it and president eisenhower before he was a president actually saw a ufo he worked on a ship at one point or was on a ship and his crewmates and everything saw um, a ufo go into the water um, speaking of presidents before they were presidents reagan president reagan before while he was a senator him and nancy um, had missing time they saw a ufo had missing time arrived late at a party two hours later um, he was a yes it's that time again where I have to thank you a lot for um, being following me listening to my boring voice and um, asking some excellent questions um, I'm just letting you know that there's still so much more we haven't even touched on um, the black eyed children um, portals time travel oh there's just so much more to look forward to uh, hopefully you're enjoying these videos if you are just you know just again say a word and i know people's gonna write word but just let me know you're still enjoying them because i know um you know i get the the followers but uh sometimes it's hard to know whether they're actually enjoying what i'm doing um and uh so don't forget i'm on youtube and don't forget to look at my uh, backup channel called uh our true history replies which has got extra content which really goes deep and i'm also on live chats on mondays at noon uk time so hopefully i'll be able to see you all there and talk to you soon thank you so what happens when a woman has a baby because of artificial insemination by an alien and then the aliens take that child away um, now, there's been cases where the mother has been beamed up to the ship to uh, cuddle, see their child. Um, now, the general descriptions are the child has hair that's out of control. In other words, the, the aliens don't bother uh, combing it or brushing it. Um, from what we can gather, the aliens don't have the empathy that a mother would with a child. So, of course, the child... Uh, needs some sort of bonding apparently which is why the mother gets taken up there now the reason why they're uh, creating hybrids is a complicated one and there's probably many facets to it now the old story is that they can't actually have children themselves so therefore they're creating hybrids from humans an alien hybrid now this is just a picture from someone's book i believe um but they do exist and some are put on earth and i'll go into that in another video because it's, it's a whole long thing but the ones that are taken away uh to another planet now there's some trains of thought on what what's actually happening here so one is that they're storing them ready to, to, to be populated on our planet when we kill ourselves uh the other one is because the, and we're not talking the little greys we're talking the tall whites and the um Pro mantis etc because we've got the ingenuity um are they trying to get that ingenuity from us by creating the hybrids so instead of using us they've now got their own um race that they can use to their advantage um now they can um telepathically talk to people these hybrids so that's an interesting Area 51 and aliens go together like tea and biscuits. Well, in the UK, they probably do. Uh, Area 51 is a place in Nevada in the United States. Originally formed in 1955, but was classified as not existing. So um, it was the old joke, you know, everyone knew of Area 51, but apparently it didn't ever exist. But of course it did. 
Um, it wasn't till about 2013 that it became declassified. And when they declassified it, they said that it was just using the area for testing um, you know, mil new military vehicles, etc. However, we know different, don't we, everybody? Um, just quickly, um, I must say a shout out to this watch repair company. Uh, it's called Good Timing. Uh, dot, uh, so it's actually called Good Timing dot UK. Um, very reputable. They do it's a UK thing. So if you've got a half decent watch that you need repaired, um, or even a decent watch, but not a, obviously cheap five pound watch but if you've got a watch that needs repairing i would highly recommend these guys they give you a quote as well they don't they will not rip you off and you will get your you know watch back in a great uh great place um i can vouch for them good time in dot uk okay back to area 51 so um apparently um planes that was landing in area 51 were all black blacked out no windows so whoever's in the as a passenger couldn't see um anything where they're going or whatever and apparently the pilots had to play a certain song i think it was this particular song by john Denver, denver um before they landed which was quite interesting to hear um now in area 51 or around area 51 there's microphones uh under the ground you cannot get into area 51 um, without them even knowing. In fact, to be honest, you can't even get near Area 51, even though they say that, um, that you know the people up on the mountains will see you at these at the checkpoint here that, or the gate. They know way before that, so so don't think that you. Uh, so these are the people that was trying to storm uh, Area 51. I think if you remember, there was that storm in business. Um, so Area 51 has is mostly underground um once you get to it if you was uh, able to even get to it now underground is where all the magic happens and i'm not talking card tricks um now there's different le levels i think there was seven levels the last time i heard about it and i'll cover those levels in another video really are aliens real really this guy here you have to listen to before his videos get pulled off unfortunately he's passed now um he did these videos and said he will never commit suicide and unfortunately he was found as if he had committed suicide so i'll let you work out where that went but his name is phil schneider and his videos are on youtube still can't believe it uh, i'm just going to play you a, uh, a few little clips here just to get you in the mood that's what the public's been told the military's known about the alien question for the better part of 70 years and they first saw their glimpse of what was going on as early as 1909 in the american southwest now, army cavalry evidently were chasing some bandits and they entered his cave they were holed up in a cave and what they found in there was flying discs and and little gray guys and all kinds of weird things and they didn't know how to explain that and they wrote them down as best they could and it's been in secret archives ever since now this guy actually carries on and talks about so much more. Um, he lost, I think, two or three of his fingers in a fight with aliens, which I'll cover in another video. But just while I've got you, I'm just going to give a shout out again. I know I'm doing lots of shout outs, but it's worth it. These are hoodies uh, with my body, my choice. Now you can probably guess what we're saying there. <clears throat> you know, don't force us to do something or take something that you don't want to take. So these hoodies. Uh, I'll put a link in the description um, of exactly where you can get them from. So you'll be supporting a fellow person like myself uh, if you did buy them. Um, and they're pretty cool, actually. Um, my body, my voice, my body, my choice, I think it was. Yeah. So I'll put the link in there. Now back to Phil. And here's something interesting. Probably the reason I got shot to pieces and 11 attempts on my life is... I am a direct threat to the entire system. The New World Order, the alien agenda is one and the same. It's world takeover and the decimation of the population of this planet. Okay, this video is very old. Decimation of the population of this planet. This video is very old. Uh, in the 90s, I think, or very early 2000s. Uh, I'm not, not quite sure what year, but it was very, very early when it was shot. 
Um, so yes, you, if you're following everything that's going on in the world today, you know what he's talking about. Now, he does talk about a lot of other stuff, which I'll, I'll cover his most important elements in another video. But uh, do watch out for him, Phil Schneider, on YouTube before his videos go down. Absolutely fascinating. So this guy, Phil Schneider, uh, reports that he lost his fingers due to an alien attacking him. Now, the story goes, he worked um, in construction and he had to dig de deep down in a base called Dulce in New Mexico. And at the bottom of the, the where he was trying to dig was aliens. And apparently the military above wanted to get down and see what was going on with these aliens that were hiding uh so he went down finally managed to, to break down you know using construction uh, digging and he went down with some uh, military people and as soon as they got to the bottom there was a firefight between the aliens and the military um one alien put his hand near its chest if i remember correctly and then a laser beam came out and took his fingers right off which you can see there do go listen to him he is fantastic I thought I'd call out some videos I think are fake. Now this one here was shot by a guy who supposedly heard uh, or see or an alien by his window and then um, decided to put it on a tripod and, and leave the room to watch this alien do that. Now there's a couple of reasons why I think this is fake. Uh, one is the size of the head there is actually bigger than a normal human head by the pane of glass. So um, if this was one of the three to four foot aliens, the head wouldn't be that big. Second of all, an alien wouldn't need to peer through the glass, it would just beam in to your room uh, and it certainly wouldn't need to hide like that. Um, so if you see any videos where they're hiding, they, they, they just wouldn't do that. There's, there's no point in them doing that. They'll beam you up or they'll beam in. Um, and just the way it moves and everything else is just, it looks like it's playing up to the camera um, just for, for effect, so I think that's fake. Okay, another alien video that I think is fake is this one here. And I'll tell you why in a second. Uh, so you've got this creature walking along. It looks a bit like Dobby out of bloody Harry Potter. Um, now what's interesting is the way it moves. Now the way it moves, um, because they're silicon based, they don't have the rigid structure that we do. So the movement is actually fairly correct uh, from what I understand. But they don't come alone they will will appear in twos or threes uh, or more so for this one creature and at the end there is just a simple fade uh using any any technology that you have um you know even your phone can do that fade you know if there was a light beam or something else that took him up i would you know be more believable and i'm not even sure what's on its head and it doesn't appear to have any clothes maybe i'm wrong because it's obviously a night vision camera but the whole thing just just feels wrong to me from my knowledge okay here's another video of an alien that i think is fake the reason why well loads of reasons but one is it's shot in black now when you're interviewing someone you don't shoot them in black uh in the dark um now this creature if it was real lives on a planet that has two suns so uh in fact this is like a sunglasses to them it's also got augmented reality and computerized so they can actually see stuff through through that a bit like google glass um so this creature has no need to be in the dark now look at what happens here these characters are masked up so you can't see them and they're instead of pulling the creature away they're trying to bend over it and everything else which is absolutely fake how they're doing it now look at the size of the head of this creature it's bigger than the head of the guy in front look at that so there's obviously a person in a mask there um and the reason why is because these creatures are three to four foot it's not at all white so at three to four foot their head's a lot smaller than, than that yes it's, it's bigger than the body but proportionally it's not bigger than our heads Okay, so here's another one that I think is fake of an alien. And the reason why I think it's fake is, first of all, it's shot um, with nothing. So if it's a locked off camera, which basically means it's or either on a tripod or it's attached to a wall or something. So if it's a security camera using the night vision, which it looks like it's trying to do, you would see the background. Because obviously if it's a security camera, you want to security something like a garden or something. But you're not security in something pitch black. So straight away there's... a that rules it out that it's a security camera um, doing the purpose because obviously you wouldn't see anything, you know, because watch this creature, it just moves out of shot here, just like a few foot 
and then it disappears so that the security camera is pathetic if it's a security camera um, there's not enough behind it to show whether or not it's real there's some sort of glow behind its back there which makes me think it's t uh, totally fake there's no substance to this other than it just hiding in the shadow